guys, welcome to a walkthrough of my latest template. The template that is available on my website right now. So please go ahead and download that. Uh, once done, come back here and we'll walk you through it. Now, um, it will consist of two parts. One is a walkthrough, as I just indicated, and the second part will be a more sort of in-depth look at how this template actually works underneath the hood. Now, originally I wanted to do a full tutorial and recreate the project from scratch, but I started recording it and it took way, way, way too long. It took like close to an hour and a half and I thought that's too long, people will just not watch it. Now, before we go into the walkthrough of the template, I wanna point out that there is a sort of an enhanced template on my Patreon uh, website. Enhanced in the sense that it is more like an alternate type template that does something a bit differently. As you can see here on the screen, right? It does a nice rotation because the next text, each time the next text comes in, it's sort of upside down and the camera needs to sort of adjust to it. So if you do this for too long, probably you may get a little bit dizzy, but I thought it was a pretty cool template. So this is for my patrons only. So let's now go into the walkthrough. So once you've downloaded the template, you can open it up in either Fusion Standalone, as I've got it over here, or in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, one of the first things you will want to do, of course, is to change the text, because I'm assuming you don't want to reuse the text I've got here. The important part is that all the text is comma separated. So the different feeds, so the first part will be auto camera here, then no keyframes, it's all comma separated. If you want to have a line break, so two lines above each other, you need to use hash hash. Okay, so that's that's very important. Now the other thing you of course will want to change, or not of course, but quite likely, is the font and such and the size. Now Important thing is, of course, when you change the size, do ensure it still fits the canvas. One other thing is the duration. The duration basically means how many frames are there before a new word or set of words will appear. Uh, now, once you've changed all of this, you will see it will immediately update. So that's the power here. So let's just quickly type something else in. Tutorial, comma, example, comma, third, and now we'll do a line break, oops, third line, last feed, or whatever, right? And if I play it now, you can see everything is automatically updated, and you know, the camera still works, so really cool stuff. Now, next one up, that's here in the P custom. There are basically three variables here, position seat. So this is like a random seat for the position. If you don't like the position of the words right now, you can just uh, provide a different random seat and it will randomly distribute the words somewhat differently, right? So uh, the first one will always look the same because the camera is uh, there from the start, but here you can see the movement is somewhat different, right? So if you don't like the movement, change the position seat. Second one is the range. The range basically defines as to how far apart the words can be in the X and Y space. So X axis and Y axis. So if you have a very small number, say two, you will notice once it updates that the words are all a bit close to each other. Now, you can see as well the surrounding words, which I call the sort of environment particles, they automatically update as well to be in a smaller area, right? So that's sort of automated. If you want to change it, of course, you can override the expressions. Uh, let's set this back to four because I quite like that. And the last one um, I want to point out is the speed. Now, you got to be a bit careful, right? If you set this too high, the words will come to the camera too fast and the camera doesn't have the time to move to the next word. So let me give you an example. So if you make this 1.25, right? And if you so do this, right? It doesn't have enough time, right? It will attempt to do it, but it doesn't quite work. Well, it sort of works, right? But it is, it's a bit less than satisfying in my mind. Uh, a 0 0.15 will work quite nicely still, right? So it's just a little bit faster than the default tempo. But it's quite nice. 
right? Um, what you could do, right, if you have a higher speed, you can position the camera a bit further away or, and the camera is over here, you can change the focal length, right? So you can bring it in closer, further away. But of course, the overall sort of perspective will change as well. Uh, so that's what you can do with the P Custom here. Now let's move on to the next important thing. In the P Custom 2, uh, there is there are a few things here. When you see the interpolation path, uh, this basically defines as to how the camera will move from one word to another word. And the important stuff is in the modifier, and you may have expected this. This is actually an animation curve. So you can set the in and out easing over here. I set it to quint and it works quite nicely, but you can set it to your liking. Now this will affect, um, yeah, just like I said, the interpolation. All right, um, the other things over here, um, maybe one last one, the rotation factor. Now the rotation factor will define the tilt, I think it's called of the camera, right? The rotation over the Z axis. Um, again, this is done by a modifier. And if we go to the second modifier, it's a perturbed modifier. So if you wanted that to be a bit stronger, right? You can see it here then it will be a little bit more exaggerated. Or, if you don't want to have any of that, you can set it to zero, and then, you know, the camera remains straight. But let's set it back to one where it was. Now, the last one, also a very important one in my mind, is the sort of environment particle section. So this is where you see these words, uh, the, these sort of screens, so let me set this to perspective, then we can sort of zoom in a little bit, right? These are all these sort of virtual screens. Now, the way this works is basically I created a very simple text note, pasted in some code, some code from some random website, and I make that move by uh, adding an expression to the V anchor. That makes it sort of move up and down. And as you can see here, it goes up and down. Now, because it's all quite fast, and as they are all emitted at different times, some of them you'll see going up and down, uh, up and some down, and it looks like sort of these, well, cool scrolling screen sci-fi type thingies. Um, you can, the, the important thing is you can change this to whatever you want it to be, right? The important thing here for this particular setup is that in the Style tab, it is set, the Animate is set to Particle Age. If you want, don't want the image to move, set it to particle birth time, for instance. Right. Um, the other thing you can change here is, of course, the color. So I set it to sort of an amber, orangey type color and a, put in a bit of red and green variants and a little bit of blue as well. Set it to whatever you like. But of course, change the text to whatever you like. Or be really bold and do something completely different. And I've got a little example here where I've got you saw that in the example as well, instead of words, I've got some faces. Now, little interesting bit here. These faces are actually, it's an image sequence of faces, but these are generated by an AI, right? I found this website and it can just generate AI faces. They don't actually really exist. Isn't that weird? And then I basically apply a color corrector to take out the saturation or desaturate the thing, resize it a little bit, and um, in the style tab, I set it to animate particle birth time. So, right, not particle age. I want this to remain static to what it was. Uh, also, I uh, have a little bit of size over live animation here so that it sort of grows in size uh, at the start and shrinks at the end and a little bit of a fade. And that's why you've got this little sort of a pop-up thing uh, going on. Right, um, so that, that's really cool. So important thing here, and I should mention it again, right, this is an Im image sequence and it's set to loop. So it will constantly continue. Now this is it in terms of the walkthrough of the template. Now as for the last part of this walkthrough, I want to tell you a bit about what's going on underneath the hood. So essentially, as it may have dawned on you, it consists of a few flows on the one uh, hand, we've got our word particles, right? Then we've got, and that may surprise you, a camera particle. We'll go into that uh, in a moment. 
and lastly the environment particles so they are all merged then we've got the renderer and you know we apply a little bit of soft glow you can you can of course spice it up and all that now as for the last part of this walkthrough we're going to take a little bit of a look underneath the hood so how does this work essentially there are three parts to this on the one hand we've got the words right you can see them on the screen here then we've got the camera and that's actually a particle system more on that in a moment and then lastly the environment particles okay so uh, then they get basically merged into a node i actually don't use a light here in this setup i just have a render and set to opengl some depth of fields and, and that's basically it um but let's focus on the words word particles first so they're governed by the text input right as i've shown you the duration is key here so the duration is set to 72 as you can see here right and in the p emitter i use an expression that basically says if with double i uh, time modulus text input dot duration equals zero emit a particle otherwise don't emit a particle that basically means that every 72 frames it emits one particle right? and that particle stays on for 300 frames that is it for in terms of the emitter now where are they positioned of course you have a starting position as, as such right so the starting position position i set it at minus eight for the set offset it is a sphere but it doesn't really matter because in the p custom i then adjust the x and y position and the x and y position those actually won't change they are set once now that happens basically in the intermediate tab got a bunch of um, formulas here or expressions in the first one I basically subtract one from the particle ID because it normally starts at two and I wanted to start at one and then I use a couple of random functions to basically say I want the X position to be a random value between minus n3 and n3 based on the particle ID and the position seed right number in one so the n3 was the range so the range will be between minus four and four so then basically it will yield that random value but a random value will always be the same based on this particular seed and as we're not changing the i1 for the particle anymore right it has a fixed particle id we're not changing the n1 over time it remains the same similarly for the y position then using the particle tab uh, position x i2 position y i3 and then lastly for the position z that's being affected by velocity c z or z that's governed by number in two that was our speed parameter now the interesting thing then is what about the camera and that's of course why you're watching this how this does this work how does the camera know where it needs to be to follow it right and this that is where this particle system comes in this particle system is basically just emitting one particle and that particle will then follow the words more on that in a moment and then i replace the particle with a camera via replicate 3d and the replicate 3d is set to tbn aligned right so basically the camera is more or less like a particle or replaces a particle now how does that then actually work now the magic is happening in the p custom tool so what we are doing here is basically saying okay i want this camera to move from one word to another word and it's going to do that based on the particle id so it knows where the position is of each word based on the particle id now how does it work well it will use the exact same intermediate function so as long as we know what the particle id is of the word then we can replicate that random seed within it right this bit by using that same uh, position seed right and the id of the particle as i said so as long as I know those IDs, I know where the X is going to be, where the Y is going to be for a given word. Okay, so that's key. So the way it then happens, or the way it then works, is that I calculate the, the current ID. It's basically the, the ID of the current word and the next one. And then basically I get the particle to move from one to the other. Okay, so to visualize that, let me just unhook the camera here and add in a shape 3d and let's set it to cube and let's make it like 0 to 1 and if we hook this in and then display the merge 3d 
then when we play this, we can see what's happening. Right? We see the cube moving. The cube is now representing the particle from one word to another word. Right? The reason I had to replace it with a cube to visualize it is that for whatever reason, it doesn't work with the camera. It never updates the position, at least not in the perspective view. If you go to the camera, then you can see that the camera is in fact moving. Right, so that's I don't know if that's a bug or what, but that's the way it works. All right, so then the key is how do I know the particle IDs? Because once I know the particle IDs, then you know a set I can move from one to another via an interpolation path. All right, so but how does that work in terms of the particle ID? So unfortunately, in Fusion particle ID numbering is not straightforward. For those folks that have watched my Unleash the Power of Particles tutorial from years ago. Um, at the time I told you, you know, particle numbering starts at two and it goes up for each particle. Now, the truth is I was not entirely accurate. That was based on all the particles being emitted at the same time. Here, we're doing it every so many frames we emit a particle, so how does that work? So what you need to do is actually to take the frame number into account as well, right? So. Um, it starts at 2, and the next one up is 75, right? I basically found it out by basically actually displaying a bunch of particles here. These are actual particles. And if you look at the lower left, you see color R75, because I put the particle ID in the red expression, or in the red channel expression in the P custom, so that I could see what particle ID we were looking at. So I found out it was 75. So the logic here is really it takes 72 plus 3. Okay, first one was 0 plus 2. Then it's plus 3. Then the next one's plus 4 plus 5. You can see the pattern happening, right? It's And then if you then subtract the 1, ID minus 1, then you basically get this logic. It's the frame plus 1. The next one is frame plus 2. Then frame, frame plus 3, frame plus 4. So I needed to devise a method to calculate that, right? And that's basically yields this formula and that's then being used in the P custom too. So that is the way that works thing. So uh, going back to the template, the last thing I wanna to touch upon is the uh, environment particles, right? You see them displayed at 90 degree angles. It's a very simple way to do that in the P custom. Again, I use an intermediate variable and the one I want to focus on is this particular one. This basically yields a random value between 0 and 4. right? And then, then apply a seal function to basically round it. So essentially, really, um, it will never be 0 unless the actual random value was 0 0.000, but it never really happens or it's very unlikely. So it will, in reality, yield a value of 1, 2, 3, or 4. right? And then based on that, I basically set the rotation. If I1, say, equals 1, then set the Y rotation to 90. If it is equals 2, set it to minus 90. Any other value for the rotation Y, set it to 0. But then rotation X, if it is 3, set it to 90. If it is 4, set it to minus 90. So that was really all there was to it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was not too long. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.